Hello and welcome to another episode of Talking Cricket with Akash. While I'm getting drenched in Bangalore, uh, Akash is enjoying somewhere uh, in a really rather nice and warm and sunny climate. Akash, where are you right now? Well, my, my flag suggests that I'm somewhere in the Caribbean. Uh, I'm in Jamaica for the Tri-Nation series, uh, in, including or involving India, West Indies and uh, Sri Lanka. And yeah, Sri Lanka. We are playing uh, against them once again. But then uh, the, don't, don't uh, really grudge my sunshine or uh, the better weather that I have because I spent about two and a half months in England and uh, English summer, as we all know, was, was quite wet, was quite cold and hence uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy to be out of there and here in, in Jamaica. Before we get to uh, the Jamaica weather and the millionth ODI played between India and Sri Lanka, let's start with the ICC Champions Trophy. And it's, it's surprising just when um, the Champions Trophy was being wrapped up and everyone decided to put it in a closet and lock it up for posterity. It's rekindled an interest in ODI cricket. It's been a rather successful tournament, don't you think? Oh, well, I'm a huge fan of the Champions Trophy to be fair. Uh, I think it's it's a wonderful concept where the top eight teams play against each other uh, in a space of just 17 days. And since it happened uh, in England, it was obviously wonderful because you can uh, there's not much travelling involved. So players are not getting tired. You play a game, uh, travel for a couple of hours and then you have a two, two or three day break. The championship uh, started and got over in 17 days. Uh, weather obviously played spoil sport towards the latter half, but then uh, the cricket was outstanding as we all expected it to be because the top teams were playing against each other. So personally, I feel and I hope and I pray that this is not the last edition or this was not the last edition of the Champions Trophy and we'll see a few more. And uh, I, I have this feeling uh, because I, during, during my work with the BBC TMS team, uh, we interviewed uh, Dave Richardson. Uh, the CEO of the ICC and uh, Jonathan Agnew asked him this direct question, is this the last one? And he was very non-committal. He just kept saying, never say never, you never know, let's see how it goes. There is a test championship happening, uh, so we'll get to know in good time. Uh, but he never for once said that uh, this is the last edition, so I'm still hopeful. That sounds very much like Cristiano Ronaldo trying to angle the move back to Manchester United. Never say never, you never know what happens. But sure. uh, let's not talk about football and uh, Manchester. Let's talk about Birmingham and the venues uh, itself. They were packed houses. How much of it had to do with India and England making it all the way through? Uh, well, I think uh, whenever and wherever India plays, you get packed houses. And uh, I think obviously that's the most uh, uh, or that's the biggest contributing factor to the people coming into the stadia. Whether it was Cardiff, uh, London, Birmingham, these were the three venues. Every single place where India played, we had full houses. I, I still can't say the same for uh, matches involving, say, Australia playing New Zealand. Uh, it was not even one-fourth filled. Uh, but uh, India-Pakistan also actually will be put in that same bracket where uh, people did flock the stadium. So when India is playing, England is playing, uh, Pakistan uh, is playing in England, uh, it's pretty much a home game for all three teams. Uh, so it is a good indicator that these three teams uh, definitely in England uh, attract a lot of attention and Indian team in general, wherever they go, they get great response. I don't think that uh, they ever feel that they're playing away from home. Alistair Cook did say in his press conference after the final that he felt that it was more of an away game for the English team than for the Indian team. Um, but of course, enough about the crowd. Let's talk about the cricket itself. Uh, the Indian team has been incredibly impressive when uh, we thought they wouldn't be able to perform, they'd struggle to cope with the conditions and with their transitional lineup. Uh, how brilliant have uh, ha have the players been who have replaced the Sachin Tendulkar, Saurav Ganguly's and Rahul Dravid's? Well, they've been phenomenal. And uh, I'll be the first one to admit that I didn't give this Indian team uh, too much of a chance before the tournament started. Because... Uh, Again, I also kept the conditions in mind that this is the first half of the English summer which will be wet and the ball will be seeming around. The pitch will have a lot in it for the faster men and hence we will uh, uh, miss the experience that uh, we, we didn't have in the side. But obviously the condition was slightly different but uh, you can't hold that against the Indian team because of, for, for the way they played uh, because the conditions were pretty much the same for everyone. Uh, while uh, uh, the, the, the conditions weren't challenging enough uh, the other factors were because uh, one, this team is definitely going through a steep transition. We've lost almost what 2,000 caps uh, since the World Cup uh, in, in 2011, the one that we won. 
uh, only four players are, are left from that squad or from that 11. So it's, it's a huge transition, but then Indians uh, have handled it really well. The shorter format has, has done well for them. Uh, 50 over cricket, they mastered the way they've batted and, and bowled. And I think uh, Indian batting stood out. It was a cut above the rest. Uh, I think only England would come a little close. But then uh, their orthodoxy pulls them down uh, in, in 50 over cricket. And for the first time, I saw teams uh, really trying their best to avoid India in the semi-finals. And that was a first and that's a huge compliment for the Indian team. Uh, what do you think about this Tri-Series suddenly cropping up right after the Champions Trophy? I'm actually okay with the fact that uh, there are more than two teams involved. Because uh, what I really detest now uh, is that uh, meaningless bilateral tournaments or on series, there are five or seven matches, where halfway through the series, even if you're an ardent cricket follower, if you love your team so much, even then you'll forget what happened in the first two games, by, by the fifth or the sixth game. Australia is coming to India sometime later in this year for seven ODI. And I, while we, we will still get uh, full houses, I'm not sure whether it will generate the same kind of interest uh, over a period of time. So, if uh, I were to replace uh, those seven ODI with a Tri-Nation series, I'll say, go ahead, do it. But then uh, I know where you're coming from and I can completely understand. And I also feel for the players because they've been on a non-stop treadmill. Finished the IPL, uh, before that the Test Series, then the Champions Trophy and now the Caribbean. From here, they'll go to Zimbabwe, play another five ODI series with, uh, with, with Zimbabwe. So, they are on a non-stop treadmill. It is very tiring. It takes its toll eventually. And uh, the team's performance will probably start getting affected too. Uh, so, uh, if we can do away with uh, a lot of bilateral series, I'm absolutely fine uh, to actually have a few tri-nation, multi-nation tournaments where there is slightly more interest. The other thing, obviously, of concern for the players is that even if they do decide to take rest, and these are players who have performed pretty well, the Dinesh Karthiks, the Rohit Sharmas, finally, um, even if they do decide to take a rest and someone like Gautam Gambhir comes in and hits a couple of centuries against West Indies, against Zimbabwe, you know, have a series where you get 500 runs. We're, I was talking to Rahul Ravid the other day and he spoke about how possession is nine-tenths of the law. And he would hate it if there was a series that he decided to rest and someone else had come in and taken the place, his position in the squad. How much of an impact do you think this makes on these players? How much of a pressure does it put on them? An unnecessary pressure, might I add. Uh, you know, I asked uh, Suresh Raina the same question, actually. I met him uh, at breakfast and I asked him, that, uh, I, I, don't you re really feel that you're on a non-stop treadmill that you have to play every day? Uh, he said, I'm just 26 and I'm happy that I'm playing and I'm playing cricket matches uh, is what I like doing. So I'm absolutely fine. And I think that's what is happening with this Indian team right now. The average age is just 26. The oldest member in the side is uh, Mahindra Singh Dhoni, who's 31. Uh, and who doesn't miss a single match. He doesn't miss a single IPL game, leave alone an international game. Uh, one day, T20s, test matches, he's everywhere. So he's the one who actually has the maximum workload, but who still doesn't want a break. So I think, uh, one, this team doesn't want a break. These young cricketers uh, really are not looking forward to a break or a rest. And then two, I think uh, the, one, the thing that Dravid said definitely plays on everyone's mind. That if you take a break, and if someone comes in and scores a lot of runs or takes a back full of wickets, then what happens to your place in the side? So that insecurity will always be there and uh, hence, I think you just keep playing. Uh, you put up with it at the end of the day, uh, you're, you're still doing what you like doing and that's playing cricket. Uh, it, may take, takes its, uh, or it may take its toll eventually, uh, but then if you can uh, carry on, you just carry on for as long as you can. Just on a final word, could you tell me how is it in Jamaica, uh, how's the sunshine and what sort of cricket are you looking forward to over there? Uh, you know, I'm actually looking forward to some uh, exciting cricket because India is involved and uh, when we were talking about Champions Trophy, uh, there was one thing that I didn't really mention, I would like to mention it now, uh, is the quality of Indian fielding. Because uh, that has come a long way and for the first time actually you could feel that this Indian team's fielding is as good as any team in the world. And uh, previously, you would uh, always point out, uh, mark out a couple of uh, good fielders because uh, they were obviously better than the rest. And now, in this team, you can only point out a couple of slow movers. And that's a huge compliment. Uh, and that's, that's why this team is so exciting to watch. When you see them play, you want to see them play because there is not a dull moment when uh, Virat Kohli, Jadeja, Raina, Karthik, uh, 
uh, all these guys are actually fielding, diving around and doing their bit on the field. So it's quite exciting to actually watch the Indian team play. Sri Lankan uh, team is another team that uh, even though I've seen a lot of them still excites me because uh, I get to see Mahila Jayawardene and Sangakara. Very selfish there. Uh, so I'll, I'll obviously uh, would like to see them play and score runs. Uh, West Indian team, uh, there is a Chris Gale there. There is Karen Pollard, Marlon Samuels, uh, then Dwayne Bravo or the Bravo brothers, uh, Darren Sammy or Tino Best, Kima Roach. These guys will excite you. They, they will actually make, you, make sure that you're not... Uh, uh, you don't sleep through a game. There will be a lot of exciting moments. So I just hope that uh, the tri series that's starting uh, on the 28th of this month actually turns out to be a good one and probably make a uh, way for uh, uh, more such tournaments than, than those uh, meaningless bilateral series. Thank you, Akash. Um, I hope to see more brilliant fielding from this youthful and exuberant Indian squad. Although I could do without uh, Virat Kohli's excessive dancing. So, <laughs> thanks a lot. But that's, uh, that's all right. It happens only after you win the tournament. So, I can yeah. do with that. I can deal with that. <laughs> You'd enjoy the tournament win. Well, thanks a lot. Um, that's it from this episode of Talking Cricket with Akash. Hopefully, we'll get you one more um, before this West Indies Tri-Series is done.